Right. And by the way, um, we're going to, before we come, before we bring, <laughs> he looked it up on the internet. He found that if you made a antimatter bullet, uh, or no, dark matter bullet, it, <laughs> you would explode. Okay, here we go. Let's go ahead. Sergeant Major, how are you doing this morning, sir? Hey, Dave. Good morning. Very good. Thank you very much All for having right. me. All right. So let's get right down to it. I'll tell you, there is an incredible number of people traveling um, in the United States uh, this summer going to different regions. They are headed south. They're going to Mexico, Dominican Republic, going to different areas all over the Central and South America to, to enjoy uh, some much needed travel that they haven't uh, been able to do because of COVID. So we're living sure. in post COVID times. Tell me what the feel is down there right now about tourism. Well, trans, uh, traveling is always, uh, uh, is, is always an issue, right? I mean, you always, you, you don't know it. There's always the unknown. You don't know where you're going. You don't know what's going on over there. So you always have to do your due diligence. Uh, your own due diligence and, and check out to see what's going on over there. But I can tell you that in Latin America, particularly in the places where like Mexico and Dominican Republic, where they have the bigger resorts and, uh, uh, and stuff like that, they're, they're pretty safe um, uh, because the, the great majority of them have their own international airport where you can fly directly from the States, uh, especially from here from Miami. You fly directly to, let's say, uh, uh, Punta Cana, and then literally they'll they'll pick you up at the airport, transport you straight to the to the areas, to the resorts, whatever. And then you if you stay there, you're pretty much great. Uh, you're safe, uh, you're sound, um, and you, you get to enjoy the the beautiful tropical weather. Uh, and the same thing in Mexico, you you get you go straight directly to the to the different airports, and uh, and, and and you're safe as long as you don't go out and venture and whatever else. Because then after that you become a target. You don't want to become a target. You want to you want to limit the amount of exposure you have to the people that want what you what you have and they don't have. So um, uh, it also great great places like Peru, uh, Machu Picchu, right? Uh, they're opening up that area over there as well, and a lot of people are traveling over there. Um, other places in, in Latin America, Chile, Buenos Aires, Argentina, Brazil, especially Brazil, also. But they don't have the resorts that uh, and and the, and the security that exists in these resorts and in, in, uh, in the other places. So I just be very weary about where you're going, uh, learn about the, the places where you're going and what's going on and how you can protect yourself. You know, and, and as you talk about it, you know, I, I did a travel just a little while ago and, I, and, and a lot of it has to do to me and honestly, um, if you're, if you're going there to have a nice time and you're, and you're, and you're basically staying either in the resort or you're staying in, and if you do go, you go in the, the marketplace and you come out and you go back to where you were, you're, you're probably a lot better off. But if you're looking for trouble, you'll tr probably find it, right? I mean, that's, huh? do what? Yeah, yeah, for sure. You'll find it. That, that's, and that's, uh, that's the main point in, in this whole thing is to do not make yourself a target. And at this point, you, you, when you go to Latin America and you look, and even, even if you look like me, I don't, I don't look specifically like, like that, like Hispanic, although I am, um, I stand out because I'm six foot one. I'm probably you know taller and bigger than most uh, Latin Americans, uh, particularly in these in these countries, and uh, and, and I'm still a target. I I, I, I dress differently. Uh, you and I dress differently, and such. So so we look different, and we and and and, and we make ourselves uh, you know the target, and and uh, they want what we don't, what they don't have. And it's uh, it's immediate. Uh, we we have to limit the amount of exposure that we have outside of the, the comfort zone or the, or the security zone. We're not, and we're not saying, are we? We're not saying don't travel. We're not saying don't go have a nice time. We're not saying don't enjoy. But but always have, and I and I understand what you're saying, Sergeant. Major. You're saying in the back of your mind, always keep a sense of awareness of what's going on. Don't don't allow your sense of awareness to to deteriorate by getting too drunk in the wrong places or or allowing yourself to be taken advantage of away from um, these these secure areas. Um, enjoy yourself because these countries have a lot to offer. Um, they have great excursions. They have great place things to do. Something you'll never get to do here, you're going to get to enjoy. And, and I think if we just make sure that we make sure our family's safe, you got kids, make sure they don't search for trouble. If you know what I mean, going out and trying to you know, I mean, the cartels run the drugs. So if they're out looking for drugs, guess who they're going to run into? 
And yeah. and I'm just saying, <laughs> make sure you're aware of what's happening and, and enjoy what it is you do uh, out there. All right, so how is – now, I know here we have a high rate of inflation. I know that it affects the nationally and globally um, price of oil, all of this going on. Um, Security-wise, um, how is that affecting your ability to pass on good information and keep your clients safe in this in this more? Because to me, when when it get, becomes more difficult and and money becomes like it is now, the, you do become more target. I mean, people target your clients more, right? They they're looking at them more. They become so. How much more does that cause that to be a difficult issue? The, the inflation has caused an uh, uptick in, in criminal activities. It's criminal activities in Latin America all the time, well, yeah, all over the world, really. But in Latin America specifically, because because the criminality is so rampant and so, and then they're used to it. They're, they're, it's everywhere. It's in the politics. It's in the private sector. It's it's everywhere. Um, and uh, so so they have to they have to so now they they've uh, now they, they ramped up their 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 criminality because uh, you know now it's it's getting just like transportation and everything else it's more expensive for transportation it's more expensive for them to conduct criminal activity as as funny as it may sound it's the absolute truth I mean they 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 are now doing everything they can to be able to to to, to obtain the the things a lot easier and uh, they, they don't care whether the rest of the population. Um, suffers uh, from the from from these uh, incredibly high uh, 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 economical uh, objections, and 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 so the 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 main thing is uh, it's it's bad, but it's but we we, we uh, as as tourists in in this case we're not the the the, the target unless we're fighting against. Them. Um, and, and, and that's, and that's, that's kind of like a, like a, like a great thing to look at because the, the, w when you travel to, to, to different places in Latin America and, and there's all this criminality going on around you, that it's, it's, you're not the target. You're not the target because you're not going to, you're not going to be doing anything against them or you're not going to go after them. You're not going to defend against them. It's, it's, so it's up to you to, to, to stay away from that. Yeah, I, I mean, uh, they, oh, but don't make yourself a, a target of opportunity either, right? I mean, uh, you, you, right, yeah, I mean, because they'll take it. It is, doesn't matter if you're in good business or in bad business, the cost of business still goes up in these difficult times. It doesn't matter how you do it. All right, so let's talk about investments. You know, there's been some talk about investing in a place like uh, the infrastructure of Venezuela, you know, for oil, um, to try to get oil from some of these countries that we've in the past had bad experiences with. Venezuela, let's speak to that specifically. And I, I don't mean it in a negative tone, but it is a bad risk, wouldn't you say, as investment because of the political climate? Yeah, for sure. It's a 100% a bad investment. I mean, the the, 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 the oil of Venezuela, um, PDVSA, it's called PDVSA, right? Um, it's, it's, it's owned by the, by the government. At one point, it was a private sector or, or private uh, entity, but now it belongs to the government. Uh, pretty much the entire oil refinery that they have and the and the excess uh, is it, owned by somebody else. And, and I want to say it's China, uh, only because, you know, they, they have no money. And so China gives them the money, but then there's that oil that they use as collateral for them. Um, and so when 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 there's a third party involved uh, in all this it's and especially a, a country like China or, or the government the government of China um, you have to really 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 be careful what you do I mean if you're doing it um, it's, it's obviously because you're into bad things uh, so the the, the, the it, I, I don't recommend it at all to to, to, to to deal with with Venezuelan government for anything quite frankly. Yeah, no, I know. I think that I agree. I think some of their pockets are aligned with uh, some of not not good guys that are looking out for our best interest either. Um, I, I do. I do agree. All right. So let's talk a little bit about um, Ukraine, um, the war in Ukraine. Um, it seems to have um, 
stagnated a little um, along along uh, developed lines, almost like a, a tr you know, I mean, I, I, I'm not going to say trench warfare, but they've created some definite lines uh, that they're pushing back and forth, uh, but they're not as fluid as they were before, right? I mean, they're, they've kind of kind of gone into the, the, I don't know how you would say it, just shelling a distance, I it, you know, not, but their ground attacks are still very costly in lives. They're still suffering immensely over there. Um, what, what would you say, what's going on over there? If you just had to just, I know you see the news, I know you see what's going on. Kind of give us an update of your take on what's going on over there in Ukraine right now. Sure, I mean, the, the, biggest, the biggest thing is that Ukraine continues to need help. Um, people are continuing to to, to volunteer their time uh, and efforts over there. Uh, also, obviously, they get paid, you know, private corporations, etc., mercenaries, and there are all kinds of people are going over there. But the United States and also other countries in NATO are, are providing a lot of not only money, I mean, but also uh, specific distinct uh, weaponry uh, to help the Ukrainians uh, defend themselves, to defend the country. Um, that's... I don't know, I don't, and quite frankly, Dave, I, I don't really know if, it, if it's getting to them on time because I hear, you know, one time we're, we're giving them a billion dollars worth of stuff, but then President Zelensky is saying, hey, uh, you know, we need help. <laughs> so, so I don't know. I, I mean, I hope, I hope that it's getting to them on time. I hope that they're able to defend their country. I hope that, they, that they're, making as, they're doing as much damage to them, to the Russians, as much as they're doing to, to the Ukrainians, but they're they're on the defense. They're they're just they, they can't even go on the offensive because uh, you know they, they'd have to go in and attack uh, Russia itself. But um, it's a tough, very it's a very tough situation. I feel very very bad for for the people of, of Ukraine. Uh, as you know, it's a it's a, it's a country right uh, close to uh, my wife's country, which is Hungary, and, uh, oh, yeah. and, and you know the people over there. Are, are very worried about what's going on over there and how that may spread throughout other countries in Latin, uh, sorry, not Latin America, Europe. Um, so it, it's, it's, it's worse. You know, I, I saw um, where, and, and I know you've probably seen where Norway and Finland have applied for NATO yeah. uh, membership, which is incredible. Um, that I, I didn't even think something like that would happen in my lifetime. Um, and here they are applying. I, I think the only objectional country, and I know that it has to have a unanimous, but it's Turkey um, holding back. I, I think they just want some. <laughs> I mean, I get it. I mean, right? You got an opportunity now to get something that you've always wanted, and here it is. You know, hey, you know, and you guys say, oh, well, wait, before they join, I just want to say I might have an objection. I, I think there might be an opportunity here for Turkey to, to get something for their their yes vote and i and i'm not against them for that i get it i understand what they're doing um uh, but but how that obviously having been through the cold war grew up um you know in the time and, and been in europe that really changes things to know that exactly what putin was trying to stop um the nato being closer to his country this is actually accelerating the uh, the NATO um, advancement throughout Europe against his very aggression, right? I mean, I mean, we're looking at the very thing he was trying to fight against. It's happening all over Europe. Yeah, and and really, what's that forcing is uh, is force. It is with with most with most or more uh, countries in the alliance. Uh, it forces Putin uh, or Russia to basically say, okay, you know, let's just. Go ahead and mind our own business. That's the idea. I don't know if it's going to work. I, it may, it may uh, twist his arm quite a, a bit more in the, where he has to do other things that which we don't really uh, want them to do. I no. mean, I hope that he's not that uh, you know crazy or, right. or, or does things like that. Um, you know, with, with using weapons of mass destruction. Um, but um, um, you know, it, it seems like he's a like he's a just a staunch supporter of, of his ideas and, and what he wants to do and how he wants to do it. And um, uh, hopefully, I mean, there's a strategy. I'm sure there's a strategy and uh, that, uh, hopefully that, that'll push back. And, and that's, what, that's what we're really hoping for. Um, so we'll leave it at that. Yeah, I, I, I know. There's, we don't want the bad thing to happen. You know, he, he does have, you know, his, he does have ability to press a button. 
I, I'm hoping that he doesn't ever use that. I look, as long as I, I feel like, as long as we don't attack directly his country, I mean, right. he, yeah, he has no, he has no political clout to do something like that. Um, right. and, and I, I mean, that's totally different. Um, and, and that's why I think it's very difficult for, you know, someplace like Ukraine who borders, you know, to fight up to a point and then have to back off because they don't want it to, you know, attack Russian soil. We don't want them to. We pretty much make, made it clear we'll help you defend your country, but we will not help you attack uh, Russia in any way. That's that's our boundary, and we don't right. want that to happen. So I, I get that. It makes it really difficult, our situation, their situation. But I, I you know, the, the number of lives this has cost, the destruction that's going on in Eastern Europe right now is... And in, in, uh, it is creating really, really difficult stresses in markets, not just in oil markets, but in food markets. I mean, Ukraine was a big food basket uh, yeah. of wheat for Africa and, and other regions. I, do we see some instability that this may cause politically and, and uh, security risk because of this inability to feed these people? Yeah, for sure. And that's exactly what's happening. I mean, that's that's causing a pandemonium, not only in, in Europe, because they also feed a great portion of Europe. But obviously, as you say, Africa, I mean, Africa is a big proponent of this. They need they need their, their, their food to be constant and continuous throughout the year so that, uh, you know, to feed their people. I mean, they're they're they're. It's 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 a mess and, and, and it has to be fixed uh, as soon as possible. So that uh, so that we may continue um, uh, progressing. Uh, I'm sorry, in, in the progression of, of, of the world, really, because uh, th this is this. All eyes are, are are in this particular in this particular region right now, and, and everything that, that comes with it. You know, and, and as we talk about it, um, believe it or not, it, it's very and and I, and I know, and I and I'm not trying to be alarmist or anything, but but really. If you look back in a short time in history and you look at some of the major conflicts that have happened um, in the last 150 years, you're looking at um, the Crimean War, which is right in the region that we're talking about. And then you're, you're looking at World War I, which started not very far away from there. And, and then you look at World War II, which started not very far away from there in Poland uh, with the invasion of Poland and, and then the assassination of Archduke Ferdinand in, in Sarajevo. And, in, and that's right there in that region as well. So... It's very important what goes on there. People don't people don't look back. They they may think this is an isolated region, but it, it affects us globally. I mean, always has, right? I mean, it, this isn't something that this isn't like the Congo, right? I mean, this is this is um, this is affecting us globally, not only in our economies, but in politically, and and could affect us um, worldwide, right? It. it to stabilize uh, for a destabilization of our security, right? I mean, it's that important. For sure, it's one hundred percent destabilization of security, not only in that area but globally. I mean, everybody's looking at, at the different the different options, the different things that are going on, particularly in, in that region, and how their uh, how they're supporting their their security structure is uh, is mess. I mean, I just read an article just recently in Japan, uh, South Korea, with one of our biggest allies. But they're doing just that. They're doing. Uh, they're, they're, and, and, and at first, you know, that's what caught my eye because I'm wondering why a country, you know, in Asia that's so far away from this from this region, etc. But it makes a lot of sense. I mean, they they, they have to see how their closeness to Europe, uh, to, to to Russia. You know, how Russia is a humongous country that goes all the way around into Asia, uh, and and how it affects them over there. I mean, they, even though there's not a mass population in that uh, part of the region in, in uh, Russia, it still affects them because uh, the, their security is the almost uh, of, of utmost importance for the people, uh, and plus they want to become, they want to continue staying uh, allies with us. So it's a big thing about you know keeping us, uh, keeping the United States happy uh, with how they do, how they conduct their security and, and the national security, and and uh, also uh, at the same time looking at how they they. You know, politically, uh, obviously, how they can keep how they can keep their their people aware of what's going on uh, uh, throughout that region, and obviously, and how it affects them in the national security. So, and you brought it up. I didn't bring it up. So, Taiwan. Um, we're we're talking about what's going on in um, 
Southeast Asia and, and, and over there. I, I tell you, it, it, it stresses, it, when you have a stress situation in Europe, it creates the, an opportunity of stress out there in, in Asia of what's going on in Taiwan, what's going on in South Korea. All of those are staunch allies in Japan. All of those are staunch allies of the United States. And, and believe it or not, China's making a press, right, politically. Um, they're, they're pushing. They want their influence to be greater in that region, um, both militarily, economically, um, and physically, right? I mean, that's, that's really their – and to turn away and say they're not doing it would be a falsehood, right? I mean, they're, they're obviously making a genuine push to uh, increase their influence over that entire – they want to control that entire region. That's correct. I mean, they, they, this is part of the plan. I mean, uh, the majority of it has to do with, their, you know, bolstering their, their, their economic and financial status uh, in the world and obviously in, in, in that area. But with that, now they have the funding to be able to, to, oh, yeah. to, to, to increment their, their national defense status uh, and, and, how, and, how, and then become bullies. Because that's essentially what they're doing is now with all this money when with all this weaponry that they're making themselves now we're now we can do whatever it is that we want and we can have uh maximum capacity within within the, within the world yeah and, so and they want that over us yeah so I'll, I'll just put this to a like like an analogy i i know that when reagan and and gorbachev met um and 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 met back in a long time ago in the 80s Reagan told Gorbachev, look, we'll always beat you because we'll outspend you. Um, and it, for no other reason, it won't be because of political ideologies. It won't be because people like you better or us better. It'll be because we'll outspend you 10 times for every ruble you spend, we'll spend $100. I mean, we'll outspend you. And, and, and here we are in this climate in China. They have an opportunity to outspend us. Um, in certain things because they have the financial backing now. They're actually a very wealthy nation and, and they have an opportunity to, to spend money for influence. And that's really what we're talking about here. And that's how China needs to be always watched. China always needs to be looked at for what they'll do to the entire world because they'll have a negative impact and, and they can destabilize these other countries, much like Venezuela, right? They have the ability to destabilize countries in our region, in the Americas, right? Very much so. And they're doing it now, right? I mean, even in some of the countries that we do well, China's there involved directly, whether it be in Mexico, whether it be um, in, in Latin America. You've seen Ch uh, China assets, right? Ma making making moves, right? Or I mean, you're aware of those as well, right, Mr. Sergeant Major? Yes, for sure, 100%. The, uh, the Chinese are influencing uh, exerting their influence into into other countries by making it easier for them. I mean, it's like to, to, for them, it's a no-brainer. They come into their country, they, they they talk politics, but they talk mainly corporation, right? You know, how can we build your economy here in this country? We can help you by by giving you, you know, whatever it is that you need, ten cents to the dollar. I mean, they sell it so much cheaper. Nobody can compete with that. Right. Nobody, no other country, especially the United States, cannot compete with that. So obviously they, 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 you know, they like that, they, you know, more bang for the buck, right? Um, and because of that, now their economy is, 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 is surging, but into the pockets of the politicians. That's the only thing, that's the only thing, that's how it works in Latin America, right? In other countries as well. <clears throat> um, it works but, here too. It works here too. Yeah, 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 here too. <laughs> Don't think it doesn't work. It works here too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for sure. But I mean, it, that's never going to stop, Dave. And it's unfortunate. Yeah, it's unfortunate. I know. Our, Sergeant Major, it's always a pleasure to talk to you. It's always a pleasure to talk about what's going on in the world um, and just uh, have a different outlook on it. You know, we always talk about markets. We always talk about transportation. But security is necessary in whatever we do. And stabilized governments, stabilized, um, you know, something stable to work in so you can keep that trust so that, you know, when you do business, there has to be a sense of trust when you do business and, and part of what you do is you help maintain that trust in your business so that we can continue to have great global business, right? I mean, that's really what you're doing is you're ensuring, helping to ensure that trust is secure 
and, and that we can continue great business for our people and people doing business abroad. And, and I appreciate that. I think your, your company is fantastic. I, I like the idea that we have not only our government, but private business as well out there doing what needs to be done to protect our business. Thank you very much, Sergeant Major. It's always a pleasure. You'll come on again soon, right? Always? Oh, whenever you need me, man. I'm here. All right. I appreciate it. Have a great day. And thanks, Sergeant Major. Thank you, Dave. You too. All right. That is Sergeant Major of the Duality Alliance, um, Sergeant, uh, Jorge Bonilla. Incredible guy. Knows um, a lot about what's going on. Um, his area of focus is Central and, and Latin America. But he's got his hands on what's going on in the world. I always like to enjoy talking to him about what's happening out there. I always have a thousand questions for him. You know what? I have about a hundred more, but I couldn't get to them today. We'll save those for next time. But when we come back, we will talk to double check Dale about some weather.